Good morning, everybody. Glad to be here among all of you. So for me, I am uh, not from a gaming uh, developing background, but I am a gamer. So uh, I was one of those who raised my hand when Ursula asked who started off with their Atari as their first uh, uh, platform. Um, so I am an adjunct professor in the engineering science department at Sonoma State. My background is I am a physicist and uh, I teach engineering, electrical engineering. I am also the director for women in tech, so supporting our female students in computer science, engineering, and physics, who are considered to be underrepresented minorities. I am also the faculty fellow of immersive learning at our institution. And uh, this is a program that I started a year ago, a little over a year ago, um, and I'm, I'm here to tell you about that today. So what is immersive learning? Um, so there is a wonderful environment that we could immerse our students in, in which research actually shows students are able to learn differently. Um, they're able to experience learning through experiential learning by these simulated real world environments. Um, and it does touch base on constructivism in which Ursula had mentioned in her talk earlier. So an opportunity for students to learn in a constructive environment. And research shows that it does increase student engagement in the classroom. It is a very powerful empathy tool to experience uh, different types of scenarios. And it's an environment in which a student can experience something that perhaps is unattainable or impossible. So for example, traveling to Mars, how many of us get to go there? Well, in real life, no, but virtually, yes. Right? Um, and there's growing evidence of student success by using this type of modality in the classroom. And so that's what I'm interested in, right? So how could I provide an environment for my students where they can be successful? And so this aligns really with the California State University's in, uh, graduation initiative 2025. So increasing student success rates, closing achievement gaps, and providing environments for students to graduate in a timely manner. Our program at Sonoma State um, really stems from this umbrella program, this immersive learning program. And so there are two tracks that we have uh, started with this. So the immersive learning track is making use of pre-existing software, pre-existing educational software that's already out there that we uh, look for on, for example, Steam and uh, the uh, Viveport and all, you know, whatever um, available portals there are out there. So from the immersive learning track, we opened up a laboratory, a virtual reality laboratory on our campus. It's in our makerspace, and it fits really nicely there because the makerspace is an environment where you are making things, tech, you know, textiles, they're tangible, and the virtual reality lab um, is used for consumption, but it's also used for making as well, right? So making software. And so the VITAL Lab is an acronym for Virtual Immersive Teaching and Learning. And we attribute this name to our partners at San Diego State University. So they actually have their VITAL program. And so it's a, it's a wonderful name for this because it fits exactly with what we're trying to do. So uh, the VITAL Lab is just one component where students come to this space in our makerspace, and they use pre-existing software to learn about things like the heart in biology class, or phases of the moon in their astronomy class, or um, they tour the world and go to Spain in their Spanish class. And it's really cool because it's just a different, uh, it's a, just a supplemental way of teaching, right? So it just adds on to whatever you're learning in the classroom. So a second thing that we're doing in the immersive learning track is the mobile VR solution. So instead of all of these students coming to this lab space, which is really small, by the way, we, you know, it's a really tiny space in comparison to what a classroom size would be. Um, but we've managed to get 
really large classes and uh, in a very streamlined manner. So our model has been working, thank goodness. <laughs> um, so for example, the astronomy class I was telling you about, we have about 100 students in that section and we, we filter them in and we get those students using um, the uh, software, uh, which is called Universe Sandbox 2. I'm pretty sure that I see some heads nodding, yes. Um, so uh, we've been getting them in in a very streamlined manner. But how about for the classes where we want to teach them all at once? And so we are looking to uh, procure some headsets for our mobile VR solution, which is taking headsets um, for a classroom size, so maybe about 30 students, and taking those like on a cart, for example, to the space where students are learning. Other things that we're doing in the immersive learning track are research opportunities. So I'm currently in a research study right now um, in studying the efficacy of students utilizing the HTC Vive and Universe Sandbox 2 in studying phases of the moon. So uh, traditionally, this is something that is a difficult concept for people to visualize. Um, but here they are in virtual reality where they're actually moving the moon and the sun and the earth, and then you see their faces bright up and they're like, wow, I get it. And that is such the coolest feeling. Um, other research opportunities we are looking into are with our um, partners at CSU East Bay in construction management and uh, definitely open to all sorts of research opportunities. So I'm here also to talk about the development track because there's just not enough educational software out there for all of the needs of the, of the uh, educators uh, of what they want to use to potentially supplement for their classes. And so what I've started on our campus is these development teams that are multidisciplinary. And I'm going to share with you today about our multidisciplinary development track. And these are groups of students who are creating virtual and augmented reality applications for education. And these applications are, um, of obviously they're meant to be educational, but they are open source. So the intention is that students uh, are, are going to use these apps at some point you know, in a classroom setting. So it's gonna circle back into the immersive learning track, right? So students can use that in, a, in, in our vital lab and so forth. And the focus is on pedagogy, accessibility, Okay, that's a big one there. And uh, in the hopes of eventually embedding assessments and so forth as what Ursula was mentioning. So the group of students that you see here, um, they actually presented, this is a poster presentation at ISAM, which is the International Symposium of Academic Makerspaces. This was held at Stanford last August. And they presented a software that they created for my class because I couldn't find anything out there that um, was teaching electrical engineering or physics. Um, and there's some very difficult concepts to visualize in, you know, when you're working with, for example, uh, electric currents and so forth. So how to visualize electrons flowing? Magnetic fields, I mean, what do those look like? Or electric fields, you know, those are very difficult concepts to actually visualize. So I wanted there to be some sort of app to actually show this. And so um, since there really wasn't much out there, um, I put together this team. And so for me, it was really important to get the right group of people together. Um, and it was interesting to me. I mean, could people who are not necessarily from an SES background, could they code? Could they build something? And for me, I found that, yes, people can work together in a multidisciplinary team setting and build something together. So the two students on the right-hand side are my computer science students. So they worked on the 3D modeling as well as the programming, and they did use Unity. The student um, all the way on the uh, left-hand side, she's from anthropology. She was the user experience uh, ex expert, and she was also uh, very, uh, uh, she brought on a very passionate um, experience in accessibility. That was her uh, ex expertise. And uh, of course, our subject matter expert, Corbin, and uh, he's an electrical engineering student. So the idea is that fostering this unique learning environment where you have students building for faculty clients and to utilize this software at, in the classroom once again. So there's a picture of our app there. So it's simulating a breadboard, which 
you know, sometimes it's very difficult to know how that's connected and how to wire a breadboard. So it teaches you how to wire a breadboard. Uh, it teaches you about the components um, that are used in electrical circuits, such as resistors, LEDs. And then after you connect it together, it simulates electrons flowing so that students can actually visualize it. And they originally built it for the uh, Microsoft HoloLens platform. And, uh, and they were planning to do that as well for HTC Vive and other types of platforms as well. So um, what I want to reiterate is that students should be building together in multidisciplinary teams because each one of them brings on a wonderful sense of expertise and it simulates the environment when they go get jobs out there, right? Because all of you who are developing work on cross-functional teams anyways. So here we're simulating an environment where they're learning uh, in a real world experience kind of a project and um, these open source apps can be used again by other t uh, educators. So thank you so much for your time and um, uh, thank you for those of you at Unity that invited me here. So thanks.